Hey guys, Ray from Kinsman here, uh, coming at you with another video. This time we're going to be looking at retubing and what that entails. Uh, on the bench today we have my 2 Rock Classic Type 3. It's a 6L6 uh, Class A slash Class AB powered uh, dual rectified head. Um, it's a 50 watt, so we are going to be changing the uh, power amp tubes, preamp tubes, rectifier tubes and all that. But it has a biasing uh, position and sensor in there so that you can bias it yourself and you can do all the work yourself. So I just wanted to uh, tell you about a few things to know if you're going to be retubing one of these. Um, I got all my information either directly from 2ROCK or directly from the manual that came with it. So um, I really didn't didn't take any public knowledge into consideration just because, you know, if Two Rock says it, they know their amps best. You know, there's a lot of um, people that have opinions on how to bias, have opinions on what to do, and I just wanted to really stick to the, the advice of Two Rock. So first things first, the knobs have to be all the way down. You don't want to load um, on any of the knobs. Uh, you do want it plugged into a cabinet at the correct ohmage, but you do not want to take it off a of standby. Um, on this particular two rock, you have in the back a lead contour, and I found out from uh, Chad that that is a destructive circuit. So turning it all the way down is going to provide um, some weird noise. It makes you really scared. It made me really scared. And there is also a lead trim knob in the back. You're going to turn that down. Um, one of the tricks that he told me was that if you turn down the lead contour all the way to zero, um, it is actually fully in the circuit, and if you have a bad power tube, it's going to make a lot of noise. If you turn it all the way up, it's actually completely out of the circuit, so you're really not going to get anything. So I said halfway. A couple things that you're going to need are, of course, uh, new tubes. So uh, Two Rock does uh, suggest the tube amp doctor tubes. You got two 6L6s, two of the rectifier tubes, and three uh, 12AX7s. Now, of course, you're not biasing anything except the power amp tubes, uh, but we'll get into that when we start. You really do want a high-quality multimeter. Um, two Rock suggests that the um, voltage be set to milliamps and that the variation is between point uh, 0 0.055 and 0 0.06 uh, milliamps going through the power tubes. Um, you want an insulated um, uh, screwdriver so that when you're doing the bias um, you can you can not get shocked. The other thing that you really want to pay attention to is that always keep one hand in your pocket, always keep your ground um, on the chassis, uh, but most importantly don't work with two hands. You could complete the circuit and cause a lot of problems for your health. So with all that being said, let's get into it and uh, yeah, let's take this thing apart. Okay, so we're going to start taking this apart. Uh, what, I do use my drill, but I put a clutch on it so that it really isn't going to damage or strip any of the screws. So you're going to take these um, five screws out. Uh, so you're going to make sure it's going the right way. So now that you expose the chassis, you're going to see that there is a, a couple transformers under here. And what I'll do is when I'm up on top, I'll put my hand underneath and hold it up as much as I can so that I'm not straining the screws too much. There's also a piece of wood right here that they put, which is very kind to them, so that when you're pulling out the chassis, you don't just drop it down very hard. So let's put these guys a little bit to the side. We'll start working on this guy. I'm gonna turn up the clutch to about four. So I'm gonna put my hand right underneath here and just hold it up while I'm doing this. I'm gonna go a little bit at a time. Now you can see it's, it's hovering, but I'm not putting any more load on any one screw while I'm doing this. So I'm just gonna take it slow, keep on going. I'm just gonna check myself as I'm doing this. See where they're at. I should be able to hold it. Oh, see where we're at. This thing is heavy. 
So I'm holding the load of the of the actual chassis with my hand. So that it's not hanging. Now, when I pull it out, I'll you put my other hand in there. Gets a little cumbersome. Really slowly. Let's pull this guy out. So, there you can see the inside of the chassis. See all the good work that they've done over there at Two Rock. Now, I'm gonna put this guy down right here. Size side, and you can see that the transformers will hold it, hold it up. Don't put them all the way down because the tubes are a little bit longer than the transformers. So from here, I'm gonna turn it over and take these tubes out. So let's do that. You wanna make sure that there's absolutely nothing that's going to touch anywhere if you turn it upside down. Cool. Everything looks good. Everything looks okay. Turn this guy over like this. Now, while I'm doing this, you can clearly see the bias uh, adjustment is right here in between the tubes. Uh, try to move this a little bit. It looks like a jack, but it's actually a bias meter. And then your bias port is right here. So if you were to do this upside down, it would get a little weird. So I, I suggest taking it out and just putting it like this. I put it on top of this grandma uh, tube covers. No big deal. So we know these tubes are destroyed or not, not good anymore uh, just because of the, the troubleshooting. So. Okay, so I'm just gonna push down on these guys. Slowly work in a circle. Till they come out really gingerly. You don't wanna mess with your tube sockets. Let's see how we didn't do this. So your two rectifiers. So one power tube. The other guy. Now, the more that I think about this, the more I feel like I'm going to end up putting a block of wood underneath this just so that it doesn't get too hot. Hector, this is Hector. He's just uh, overseeing. Cool. So you got the tubes out. We're going to replace the tubes, but first things first, I'm going to put something underneath it so that the, the amp can breathe a little bit. So we'll come back with a better shot of that. Okay, so we turned on the unit. It's been just cooking. Um, these, the tubes are stabilizing. The voltage is stabilizing. Uh, we have it on high power. We have it on, and it's off a of standby into the load. A uh, few things that I'm going to do right now is I'm going to explain what this is. This is the only screwdriver that I could find that um, could reach all the way into the bias pot. I put a little electrical tape on it because I talked to an electrician and he said that was a good idea. Um, since it just it had a little bit of metal, but it's, the handle's plastic. Working with a hand in my pocket always. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our multimeter that's set to millivolts. All right. Now I'm going to take one of the terminals. This is the ground. I'm going to move it over here. There's some holes in the chassis and they make for a really good spot to just put our ground on. All right. Now after that, we're going to take this other one over here. We're going to put it in our bias pot here and we're going to read what it says. All right, so right now it's set at about 56.5, 56.6. That's, that's in range of what Two Rock's uh, recommended voltage is, all right? Now, if we wanted to take it up just a little bit, we'll take our screwdriver and we'll stick it in the bias right here. Just like this. And you're going to go really, really slow. Again, with the hand in the pocket. And you're just going to move it just a little bit to the right. Turn up the voltage just a little bit, and there it goes to uh, 57. 
and that to me was a really good middle ground all right so i'm gonna keep it right around 57 if we can put it at 57.5 that'd be awesome but this is very sensitive so each little incremental bit 57.5 easy peasy um going to just monitor it for a little while and and see where it's at it's actually at 59 which is a little bit high and now it's jumping up to 60. so there's going to be little incremental um things that, that happen when while you're doing this so just look at it and and see where it stabilizes all right um it's at 60 and it's it's that's that's the high point so i'm going to back it off just a little bit and you can feel it in your hand when you're doing it. So 57.6. Now, literally, you're doing this just a micro turn. All right. Um, when I looked at the bias adjustment, it was right around 12 o'clock, if you're looking at it. And I've maybe turned it between 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock and had from 55 all the way to 60. All right. So you're really going to have to feel it out. Do it very, very slow, because if not, you're going to really make the voltage jump. All right. Awesome. We're going to put this guy back together and, you know, everything looks to be reading OK. So we'll have some closing thoughts here in a minute. OK, so we've we've just been monitoring the multimeter, making sure that it's right there in between the uh, 55 and 60 millivolts. Um, Keep in mind that when you first turn it on, when you first uh, have your port set on, on positive and, and where the bias is, that you're not going to get an instant reading. That was kind of uh, freaking us out a little bit because nothing was reading at first. It was just jumping around. There's no voltage. And, and a few other things happened, but it just took a good minute or two minutes to stabilize. Um, so once it's stabilized, it's really, really spot on. Um, little 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 um, little wavering between 57.3 and 57.5 but I'm totally good with that because you know the recommended was uh, 55 to 60 so uh, a couple closing thoughts is you know make sure that all your load is down uh, no volumes are on uh, nothing like that make sure your contours on uh, but just in the middle make sure all everything there's no load on it as far as like a signal going into it make sure that your load as far as your homage is correct to your speaker cabinet uh, make sure you got a really good multimeter because we tried just monitoring the biasing when the old tubes were in and we noticed that uh, a multimeter that's um, not up to par is going to give you a lot of different readings and not really give you a true reading uh, I'm using this Flukes 115 True RMS. It's a little expensive, but um, like I said, I talked to a few electricians and they were like, that's, that's a really good one. Um, so check that out. And if you have any questions or concerns or very more specific questions, you can shoot me an email or shoot me a comment here in the comment box. We're here to help. And uh, if not, have a good day and thanks for watching.